What up, man? Hello. Um, hey, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we are doing a stream to support the Proko fund, uh, Ukraine fundraiser. This entire week, we are, um, I guess, doing a bunch of streams and, uh, I guess, selling art and courses and stuff to promote uh, a fundraiser that we're doing that's supporting a humanitarian uh, effort in Ukraine. So uh, we're raising funds to go to helping refugees, uh, feeding kids, helping hospitals, that sort of thing. And we have Jens Claussens here today. Jens Claussens, sorry, uh, doing a demo, and he will be answering your questions and doing art. Oh, do you want to introduce yourself at all? Or? Yeah. Uh, so my yeah, my name is uh, Jens Claussens. I'm a concept artist from from Belgium. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I. Uh, I recent I recently took a job at Quantic Dream, so I'm working on the new uh, Star Wars uh, game, uh, Star Wars Eclipse. Um, it's fairly recent. I've only been working there for a week and a half, yeah. so I'm still in the the complete panic, stressful phase <laughs> of uh, yeah. adjusting to a new job. <laughs> Uh, before that, I was taking a little break because I yeah I have a new newborn son. Uh, oh, so I, I, yeah, so I was mainly yeah doing some uh, streaming and just having fun doing personal work, uh, and that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing today. Yes. So <clears throat> yeah, so I'll show you this. Uh, this sketchbook it's like a it's a digital sketchbook um so i, I kind of always enjoyed working in uh, in mole skins but the problem i have with the traditional stuff is sometimes i get too yeah like too too careful you know once you get a, a line drawing and you kind of want to do the perfect render so yeah, I kind of like, and I and, and I like streaming, and I like working on a computer. I like sitting in this chair, uh, like this, and uh, yeah. So I, I kind of started emulating um, this uh, pencil style uh, in in Photoshop. So I made this, uh, yeah, I made this uh, this simple brush. Kind of looks quite. Uh, like a like a mechanical pencil like if you press softly it has those little holes and if you press firmly then you get a a dot you know a, a, a full line so that the idea behind that is that you know like when you graze a paper your your mechanical pencil doesn't really go in all the little textured holes of the paper so if you press softly, you kind of have the same thing, like, uh, like a like a line with some, you know, like holes in it. And if you press firmly, you get a solid line. Um, so these ones, uh, yeah, were kind of like the first ones, and then I just started doing it more and more. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm using this kind of backdrop get moleskin backdrop just uh to fool people on instagram <laughs> well, I, I, I i'm a huge fan of your artwork and it's cool seeing you know it, it does make it look like a um i don't know it does make it look like a sketchbook it's, it's cool. yeah like a lot of people on, on on instagram they're like uh how do you get the how do you get the the, the pages so clean how do you yeah. scan them and uh what pencil is it and, and stuff like that uh, yeah. I just have to disappoint them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Actually, it's, yeah. it's digital. Yeah. But yeah, the cool thing is that like I can record the process uh, and post little clips of it. Uh, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've kind of been like pushing. You know, it's it's cool to see like the the beginning pages. They were like. Uh, uh, you know, they're still like quite, yeah, like it's not like pushed. And as I'm progressing and learning how to use the, the, the brush, basically, I'm getting more contrast and I'm getting like, uh, you know, 
I'm also I'm mixing up stuff from imagination with uh, little studies of like statues and these are from photos I took myself at a museum these uh, this, this stuff it's kind of cool because then you know you, you, you got your own reference it's not just the same old Pinterest uh, photos that everyone recognizes so um, yeah again like this side is uh, is from uh, imagination except this uh, <laughs> this one here this one is actually re i referenced my uh, my son emil who was born for this one except for the face <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's it's actually yeah it's actually his is like i have a picture of him doing this this pose you know not the little uh, evil evil hand but uh, yeah. yeah it's fun it's it's fun to kind of mix uh, mix stuff mix stuff up uh, reference and, and stuff from imagination yeah um, yeah page from imagination this one is pretty heavily referenced yeah um, so this is all reference this one is is from reference but I kind of like I'm kind of like uh, aiming to be more to add my own uh, my own my own style to it. So I kind of sketch from reference and then let it go and then just uh, finish it from Im imagination. Uh, this one is from imagination. Imagination. This one was from reference, but also finished from imagination. And that leads us to this stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um so, by the way i'm going to be reading questions from chat if anyone has any questions to ask us again yeah i don't see chat anywhere is that in the stream oh, oh i guess you... it's on Streamyard, but it's uh it's on youtube now ah yeah okay yeah. Yeah. so yeah sure go ahead yeah um well i guess there are no questions yet but i guess it's um you know, sketching for a lot of people is something that a lot of people want to do, having a, a sketchbook where they have nice drawings. Um, are there any exercises or anything that you do beforehand that, uh, I guess, do you use to warm up? Um, for this, this, for this stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is, this is the, this is the warm up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, no, yeah, yeah. So, sometimes uh, I'll do stuff like uh, I'll do gestures and stuff, but it's usually, yeah, it, it usually just fits in this. Uh, uh, yeah, it kind of depends. Sometimes I'm doing studies. Sometimes I'm doing stuff from imagination. Uh, I'm trying to go. Uh, I'm trying to do more stuff from imagination. Yeah. Because you can fall into that trap of, uh, yeah, doing too too much studies, <clears throat> and you don't really want to be just somebody. You know, if if your goal is to be a character de designer, I think you better be drawing characters from Im imagination, or yeah, you you're not gonna uh, improve at it. Yeah. Um. Well, did, did you go to art school or anything? Or uh, I went to, yeah, an, a, an art school here in uh, in Belgium, but it's not really a place where I learned to draw. It was more, yeah, it was more uh, something I used to. Yeah, it wasn't a school like, for example, uh, them them saying, "Sorry, there's this sound." I, I think John put on some lo-fi music in the background. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. No problem. No problem. Yeah. So, so our school wasn't really like none of the teachers, for example, they uh, they uh, they knew about concept art. So it was kind of a constant struggle for me at the school. Uh, I, I was always trying to do like character assignments. And you know they 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 kind of wanted to have, yeah, very artsy stuff. Yeah. 
and they didn't really like the yeah realistic uh, stuff, you know, like, and I and I kind of got it, like, okay, I wasn't very good at it back then, and and it takes a it, it takes a lot of practice to produce stuff that actually doesn't look, you know, shitty. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like I would have appreciated a bit more like uh, encouragement uh, from from my teachers back then. <laughs> But eventually, I, I just kind of figured, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, pretend the the teachers are clients, and I'm gonna try finding stuff that they like, uh, and that I also like. <clears throat> so in the end, I just like my assignments. Instead of, I was always trying to push like the concept art thing, the concept art thing, and they were like, you know, they were like not hearing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, eventually I just switched to calling it, you know, comics. And that's, you know, they, they kind of, you know, it was something they understood probably a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, no, but, I think, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I kind of like used the school because I, I, I really knew what I was, what I was, uh, what I was going for. So. What I what I used the school for was they had uh, model drawing. Basically, every single hour of the day, there was a, a model drawing class going on in the school. Uh, so I just instead of you know going to a theory class, you know we had like a, a a couple of theory classes, philosophy, art history, and stuff. And you know, I, I never really had problems because because I I just did I did Latin and maths in high school, you know the 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 studying, you know like the the entire volume of studying I had to do was like one of my classes from high school, you know yeah. so so I just figured you know okay I'm not gonna go to I'm not gonna go to uh, to the to the theoretical classes, and I'm just gonna go to the model drawing classes. So what I did was like every day I did six hours of model drawing uh, without ever telling my teachers that I was doing it. You know, I just didn't want them to like meddle <laughs> in yeah. my uh, secret, in my secret plan, basically. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and and in in the last year, for example, we uh, we we only had to do like a final project. So I just kind of pretended because I knew I wasn't good enough to find a job and my plan basically was I'm just gonna do uh, model drawing for an entire year and uh, I'm just gonna pretend I am like figuring stuff out so for like three quarters of the year I just pretended that I was like stuck on my final project <laughs> like switching ideas and and then, uh, yeah, I, I did the final project just like I finished it in the last the last quarter of the year. Yeah. But yeah, I, then I, I did all the, yeah, I did all the, the live drawing, all the model drawing. Yeah. Uh, and I think that really helped me. Yeah, yeah. I remember I was in community college for a little while and um, I took the class the maximum amount of times and then talk to the teacher about intentionally failing me so I could continue to take the class over and over again. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things that's like, obviously like the education that you get from the classes is way more useful than the credentials that you, um, you get from the classes. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Um, average asks, is your personal work separate from your portfolio work? Mm, yeah, kind of, kind of. Uh, like I never seem to, I kind of want to get to that point where I, where I just, I kind of want to get to the point where I just do this stuff, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, yeah, it hasn't happened yet, but it's also kind of nice to have this pencil style as, you know, this is my stuff, you know, it's not for work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I kind of like that too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I also think it's important to find things that keep you inspired outside of the job stuff. Like, yeah. um, 
people are spending so much time on the job, they need a little something to keep art interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, with the with the with the job, it's kind of like yeah, there's so much, there's so little time sometimes to do to do like a good a good sketch. You kind it kind of always feels like it needs to be done already. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you kind of just go for for whatever uh, is is fastest. Yeah. Uh, do you still do traditional art often? Yeah. Um, well, I do. I did it quite a quite a bit. I can show you, like. For yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can uh, you can increase my my screen, my other one. So I'm gonna show some stuff. Yeah, hey John, can you switch to the double screen thing? So yeah, so this is uh, this is like the moleskin I'm talking about. So the the regular pencil sketches. Um, so it's kind of the same deal as the stuff I'm doing now digitally, uh, but then with pencil. And that's been like, yeah, that's been my personal work. Uh, and then, yeah, basically, I kind of have two, traditionally, I kind of have two ways of uh, doing it. Like I started, yeah, I'm going to show some, some more, sorry. So I kind of have two two kind of sketchbooks. I have uh, the good sketchbook for good drawings, and then I got the, the crappy one for bad drawings. So what I, what I initially had a problem with when, when I was sketching is the fact that I was too perfectionistic. So I'd spend more time erasing stuff than actually drawing stuff. So yeah, you know, so that's why um, I created uh, this other type of sketchbook, which is like this, the cheapest sketchbook. And the, the idea was basically, this is from a long time ago. The idea was basically, you know, I'm going to draw in pen or ballpoint pen, and I'm just going to sketch stuff that I can't draw. And the, the purpose of the sketchbook is that it's crap. You know, every sketch, if the sketches are good, you know, it, it's bad. Because the, the idea is that I'm practicing stuff that, that I can't draw, you know, uh, and obviously, you know, uh, yeah, because I could draw a face if I really tried and I followed like the Loomis method. I could produce a face and I, that was all I was doing. I wasn't drawing anything else. Um, and then, yeah, to get rid of that, I started doing these... Uh, those kind of sketchbooks, and then uh, eventually uh, they turn into. Uh, let me find a okay page uh, here, because I still do the same thing. Like many years later, I'm just gonna find a a better page here. Uh, so yeah, so the, the bad kind of drawings, the same, the same kind of effort, you know, turned into this kind of stuff, right? So the, the, so the idea is that, you know, you just draw, you try to kind of like one shot the, the, the drawings and yeah, you just, you know, there's still bad pages, but once in a while you kind of hit, you know, you kind of hit it right. And then you, you create a very good sketch. Uh, so yeah, so basically, instead of like tr fearing, uh, fearing what you, what you, uh, you know, what you're drawing, like fearing to make mistakes, you just make so many uh, drawings that you know, you, you know, you stop, you stop worrying basically, and that that stuff kind of fed into the the good sketchbooks, uh, you know, th those are this is like the good. So this one would be the same effort, 
of drawing than the, the, the other Moleskine I, I, I drew. So this was the sketchbook where I like really tried to, to render stuff and find a style. So I'd say like these Moleskines, the Moleskines, the good drawings, they kind of developed my, my style. And then uh, these ones, uh, you know, they kind of made me basically jam all the anatomy and, and forms into my into my brain. <laughs> so, yeah. so I, I could like in a session do like a, yeah, you can switch back to the to the to the drawings. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> We're waiting for the switch back. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I think that that really helped me, like uh, loosen, lo uh, loosening up, basically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and and again, I think that uh, um, you know, sketching and all that kind of stuff, it's um, kind of your place to play and make a ton of mistakes and um, you know, fail and be be okay with it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's important to have. Like, I remember Ian. I was talking to Ian McKeg once, um, and he told me like have a sketchbook for uh, the drawings that you uh, love. You know, drawings that you're never going to show anybody. Just things that you want to get down on paper because you have to mm -hmm. have a separate drawing or a sketchbook just for studies, like eyes and arms. Yeah, and anatomy, that, exactly. kind of, that kind of thing. Yeah, totally. But the, the thing is, like, the, the the thing I noticed is like when you're Okay, I'm kind of like I'm I'm having fun on social media and I had kind of the the luck maybe to to get like a you know to get a good following at a certain point and I, the thing I noticed is that you know those those fast sketches they're often like really what people want to see as well yeah so okay you don't have to show them if they're really bad but sometimes you'll hit like a really nice sketch and it's it's worth showing but i agree with uh, ian mccake's point like half of the stuff in there like okay 90 percent of the stuff in those sketchbooks i'm not gonna i'm not gonna show <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah that, a, sorry, the, 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 that that way of drawing that i do with a ballpoint pen really helps me now with this stuff because now i can do this kind of direct uh, drawing. I'm using reference for this, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the way, okay, it's maybe strange, but it's actually I'm drawing this from a, a photograph. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a photo <laughs> of me, right? You did took a photo yeah. of me, and then. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, Ahmed Dory is in the chat, and he says, uh, "Jens, love your work, and hello, Christian. Hey, Med. Hello." Uh, <clears throat> see um so yeah. with 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 this style i i'm kind of all about uh the form form rendering like my style is kind of what i what i kind of pick i like these little these little shadow shapes but i don't like stuff that like if you see my face face for example like half of my face is no like this half of my face is in shadow i kind of tend to avoid uh those kind of lighting situations in my sketches because I really love the the form uh, rendering. So usually I'll pick a I'll pick a lighting situation where uh, most of the most of the phases uh, lit actually by by the light, and then you, you kind of start getting these you know those uh, interesting you know like little triangle shapes everywhere uh right yeah so that's kind of what i what i what i love about this and i, I really like the the form rendering um uh so yeah um, <clears throat> well I, I guess a uh, a relevant question is uh how did you get so good controlling values and sketches uh yeah, it's a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah sorry sorry but <laughs> yeah uh i don't know uh i think like one of my first assignments was you know to answer that question a bit more practically uh one of my first assignments was a portrait assignment so uh you know it was my my first i think i i got it through a mutual uh connection like a guy from school who was a bit older he graduated and he he dropped my name at this local magazine uh, and it was just like you know it wasn't anything special it was mostly uh yeah i had to draw it was like a, an economic uh magazine i had to draw like ceos from companies and stuff uh but yeah they gave me quite a bit of work so they gave me um like a portrait portraits to do uh like every week i had to do one tiny little very detailed pencil uh portrait of uh yeah it was like an advice column like a, a some kind of ceo you know they it gives tips on how to you know uh you know i don't know uh buy stocks or whatever you know i never actually read the magazine uh so yeah i had to draw a little pencil portrait um you know try to do it as realistic as possible and then twice a week uh no w once every two weeks uh i had to do a full portrait for them um yeah and that's really where i i think where i learned how to control value just by you know probably if i you know maybe if i wasn't paid for it i w you know i probably wouldn't have done as much studies you know it was basically getting paid to do studies you know that's that's actually kind of perfect <clears throat> and uh yeah that the two the pencil portrait eventually stopped and i just had to do the 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 actual portrait uh you know the the more detailed portrait every week yeah uh yeah i think that was great practice and yeah. I, I, re I remember once like i was working uh i was working for an animation studio like in-house and uh yeah they, they called me they were like oh this is uh, like a special anniversary uh of our company we need 60 60 portraits done i was working full time <laughs> so yeah you know i of course that was like crazy amount of money to, to yeah. have like extra so yeah. i said yes to that and uh, yeah i basically did yeah, nothing but work <laughs> i yeah. finished one portrait during lunch uh and then yeah. and then one portrait uh, at home <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I, I guess um, I always talk to people about this, but I think it's important to like get your chops in as a student to get good enough so people will start paying you. And then you kind of like learn on the job, you know, it's yeah. like people are paying you to get better versus, you know, being a student forever, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, but let's see. I, I remember, I, I remember like talking to the guy and he was like, yeah, so you know, can you do a little? Can you do a little like, uh, how do you say, um, like a reduction in your rate for the for the portraits? And I was like, <clears throat> I was like, okay, you know, like, okay, I get it. You know, you're not gonna pay me fifty thousand dollars for this project. Yeah. And uh, so, so you know, I said, I said like a basically halved my rate and I could kind of feel the relief in his voice. <laughs> and then I, like in the same sentence, I, I changed the rate, you know, like, or maybe, <laughs> you yeah. know, I said like, maybe you could do, we could do two. I wasn't getting paid that much. I was like, maybe we could do 150. Oh, uh, and then I could hear, hear the relief in his voice. Yeah. And then I, I I, I I doubled it. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like yeah. okay, I'm about to screw myself really bad here. 
Yeah. Oh, I, uh, we just on the previous stream, uh, Stephen Zapata was talking about how if you're pricing your work and you say uh, if you pitch a price and they don't cringe, you're undervaluing yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I probably I probably undervalued undervalued myself a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. I don't know. I think it's a. Uh, uh, the path to taking on more and more money as an artist is always kind of a difficult thing. And yeah. uh, again, Stephen is talking about how when you, whenever you think about how you're uh, overpricing your work, you know, thousand dollars for a painting does sound like a lot. I think that you know people are spending three, four, five thousand dollars on purses they're going to use for a couple of months, you know, or yeah, exactly. five thousand dollars on a pair of Yeezys or you know something. <laughs> Um, and in that context, uh, charging X amount of money for a painting is totally, totally fine. Yeah. And once, once you live by yourself and you contract some like plumber or something, you realize that you're asking way too little money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, can you talk about the brushes you use, pretty please? Yeah, so this one, uh, this one, the idea is that it just kind of mimics a, uh, yeah, just a mechanical pencil, basically. Um, so, as I told before, if you press softly, it it got some holes that mimic the paper texture, and if you press firm firmly, so yeah, what I'm what I'm kind of doing is li limiting myself to one brush. And then seeing how far I can get with it. Yeah. So, yeah, for people who just joined, I can go through it again. So this is like a digital sketchbook. And, yeah, it's just stuff from imagination and stuff from reference mixed. So, yeah, you know, as, as time progresses, I'm learning new ways to use the, the brush and uh, pushing the basically pushing the render to something that, you know, is more contrasty, for example. Uh, so in this page, uh, those four drawings are from imagination, and then this one and these two are from reference. And then in this one, this one is from imagination, uh, from reference. This one is from reference, except for the little man in black alien here. And then the rest from imagination, uh, all from imagination. And then here I'm really trying to push for a more like academic, <coughs> you know, like render. Um, yeah, and I'm just, I'm mostly just trying to have fun with it and seeing, uh, yeah, seeing what I can do with it. And then I have another brush, which is like a chalk brush. Uh, and that's kind of just a simple brush, and that's just what I do all my work with, basically. Um, if somebody wanted to get these from you, is there a place they uh, they could find them? Yeah, you could go to my uh, Gumroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Jens Clausen's on Gumroad, right? Yeah, Gumroad.com. Yeah, I think oh. just my name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what is the most useful exercise for learning to feel volume better? Uh, <clears throat> for volume, yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, just any kind of study, you know, there's no really, but yeah, you got to pick good, good photographs and, you know, that's such a yeah what was the question <laughs> to render to, a good way to render volume but to feel volume better yeah you just kind of do <clears throat> yeah full value study basically and uh you do that a lot yeah let's see um Is there a genre of paintings that that's your favorite? Uh, so, 
<laughs> do you paint or do you do comics? Do you have aspiration to do a project like on your own or is the concept art you, uh, all you want to do? Um, what I really like is, uh, you know, it's kind of like the quest to get better. <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah, I love sketching and even my, and I think that's why I love concept art so much is because, you know, you're always sketching basically the, the, the fact that, you know, not a lot of concept art, you know, if you're really like going hard in a company, not, not all concept art is that, you know, finished. So, you know, I can get, I can get away with with more rough uh, type of sketching uh, or, or painting uh, at, at companies as well. So yeah, I really love to sketch basically. That's my whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I get, I get, I get, uh, yeah, I have problems like, you know, pushing stuff, uh, you know, once I, once I kind of get what it's going to look like, I kind of want to move to a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find a question. Um, well, yeah, I guess, I mean, do, do you have any favorite artists that you, that you look at or any... Um... You know, any old masters or illustrators yeah. that you're a big fan of? There's so much, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, old masters. Yeah, it used to be like Ilya Repin. Ilya yeah. Repin was one of my favorites. And then uh, Jean Dagnon de Bouveret. I don't know if you know that guy. <laughs> no, no, I haven't. That's uh, another. Yeah, I, I really like the, the painters. Like... Uh, Ilya Repin has this portrait of this of this guy, and it's kind of like a funky colored background, and the guy looks just like it could, you know, like like from a party or something, like uh, in just present day. I, I really like the kind of the work where it looks like, you know, you you really recognize, uh, you know, like real people in 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 the paintings. Like, I feel like, you know, if you have, a, you know, like, a, uh, what's his name? Uh, if you have, like, Michelangelo or something, you know, there's just too, I think there's, like, too much style in, in the, like, they, they make the people look look a certain way, or they're always using the same model or something. And I, I kind of like the artists that really, you know, put that, put the, uh, yeah, where you really like recognize the, the people, like they could be, you could, you could meet them or something. Yeah. There's not, not a lot of artists who can do that. Yeah. Well, and I, I think an important part of all this stuff as well is that, uh, <laughs> masters, um, you know, they were working with tools, often paint, they're working with paint that they made themselves, you know, stuff they found on the ground or in the ground, yeah. essentially. Yeah. And they were able to make these incredibly beautiful paintings. And, you know, people are always talking about, you know, which pen do I get? Which brush pack do I get? And um, I think part of uh, all this stuff is that, you know, people were, it, it doesn't matter what tools you're using necessarily. It matters, you know, what your tastes are and what you know. Yeah. Um, uh, and then who's next? Like uh, Rockwell, Lion Decker, and then um, you know, like the Wyatt family. That that kind of stuff that just blows my mind. Uh, and then concept artist, I'd say Wesley Burt is is one of my favorites. It's also the one I think I you know learned a lot from looking at yeah. his uh, his work. E. McKay is great. Uh, James Gurney. <clears throat> my my favorite book as a kid was James was Dinotopia. Yeah. And uh, I just go to the library and and rent out the book, and then when I had to return it, I just like 
took it out of the cart and like rented it right back. <laughs> yeah. And then later I found out that, you know, the guy was when I because back then I wasn't like planning on becoming a, a concept artist yet. <laughs> and then later I found out it was an actual living, living artist. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, there's so many great living artists right now. It's, I mean, whenever you go on art station and you just see the amount of talent out there, it's pretty crazy. You know, it's pretty insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't look at it too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, did you have any thoughts on uh, the idea of imposter syndrome or oh, you know, not, I... not, not being into your own work, you know, any of that kind of thing? I'm I'm bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> self-deprecation. Yeah, so. yeah, I need I need tips myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, when I'm doing personal <laughs> stuff, I'm super relaxed. When I'm working for a company, I get you know my stress levels just you know, it's not healthy. <laughs> like I, I I worry too much like that people are not gonna like it. Yeah. And then, you know, it can affect, it can actually affect, you know, what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, probably, you know, need to go see a, a shrink for that or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, it's, it's kind of surreal how, I mean, I, I talk to so many artists and everyone always says that imposter syndrome is one of the hardest things to get past. You know, it's yeah, not, yeah. it's not the technical skill. It's not. You know, dealing with jobs or any of that kind of stuff. It's feeling that you're good enough to to be doing the job that you're doing. Um, yeah, like when I'm when I'm streaming, I'm super relaxed. And then, yeah, when you get you know some job offers, you you're think you know you're, it's it's very flattering, and then you know you take it, and then you remember like what it was like to do this uh, to do this, to do this uh, hard job, and then it starts all over again. I, I have I have kind of like a a little panic moment uh, when I when I start like basically any job, but I guess you know you just keep going. And I th I think what helps is <laughs> communicating with your art director. Um, you know, like showing stuff, and then you know getting the comments. Uh, you know, if if, if you know sometimes. The, the problem isn't, you know, isn't the drawing at all. It's just your own mind, basically. Yeah. Because you're, you're sitting there thinking, you know, oh, it sucks, it sucks. And then you show the, the art director and then, you know, everything's fine, basically. You know, they don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm reading Dune right now again. Uh, yeah. It, it fears the mind killer, you know. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Like, yeah. People are their own worst critics and. Um, I, you know, obviously sometimes those fears are grounded in reality, but I think that people, especially people that operate at a really high artistic level, they're so self-critical and they're so aware of how much better they can be that when they don't hit that mark, they, um, I guess they will do everything in their power to kind of rationalize themselves out of, out of it, you know? Uh, I think, I think one of the most important aspects any artist needs to you know, to get better is to accept your your own level, you know. Yeah. People often think they're better than they actually are, I think. Um, you know, what, you're only as good as, like, you know, you, you sketch, you know. You, let's say you put someone, that's, that's what I always think about, like, you, you put someone on a table with a pencil and a white paper, and that's you know that that drawing is only like how good you actually are. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think that's one of the uh, I guess great equalizing things about drawing is that everyone, no matter who you are, they all have the same tools, you know, um, <laughs> and it forces you to to look at like oh I actually am just bad at this thing or I don't know it, you know, it, there, there's no um, there's you know if you're I guess like playing a soccer game or something. Uh, maybe you can justify that your teammates are bad, you know, um, <laughs> which I'm sure plenty of people do. And, but when you're at an easel by yourself, they're the only real justification for not doing the thing you want to do is that you did just weren't good enough, you know? Um, so I, I really noticed that like, you know, like sometimes 
you know, uh, yeah. The, like once I really start practicing, it's kind of like a strange feeling. Uh, or, you know, once you really start improving, um, you know, it's, it's, you can't really describe that, you know, the, the, the thing you look that goes into your hand, uh, you know, it's, it's not really something you realize it's not really something you can, you can like explain, like if you have to think about it too much, you know, you, it's it's not actually a good thing like if if you you know if you if if you have to look up how, you know what an ear looks like you know you need to yeah. actually practice more yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and I, I guess it's a i think that's why people spend so much time studying is to have that intuitive knowledge for when they actually do have to you know perform and, and you know pull the trigger on something you know like you train for a thousand hours in order to have enough skill for that five minute drawing. Yeah. Um, and it seems a little bit silly, but like, you know, it's, uh, a drawing is so much more profound than just being a drawing. Like it, um, often like the, the, I, I was reading outliers by Malcolm Gladwell and he was talking about how, uh, you look at Mozart or Beethoven, um, and you look at the amount of songs that they wrote relative to the amount of songs that people know by them, and you 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 can only really name one or two songs from Mozart or Beethoven, the most successful musicians like of all time, uh, when they've written thousands, you know. <laughs> um, so it, they train their entire lives, and all these resources were put into playing their music in orchestras in order for. You know, ten minutes for of their song to be played. You know, it's kind of yeah. kind of silly. Wasn't there like a, a I don't know I don't remember who it is, but like a guy who ordered his assistants to burn all his sketches. Oh um, yeah, you hear about that all the time. You know, I, I think uh, um, I can't remember who it was because the guy didn't want want the world to know how much time he actually spent on it. That it wasn't yeah, actually. Right. A genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the magic trick. Yeah, yeah. I, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Rockwell or Leindecker or anyone said that because it's kind of embarrassing when you uh, tell somebody how much you practiced. And and uh, we're all like screaming, no, why? No, oh, great word. <laughs> why did you do I, that? I would, yeah. I mean, I remember like it, it's, it's almost, uh, it's surreal and humbling seeing bad artists like or bad work from great artists you know like i remember i saw a fetchin nikolai fetchin study in person and it was it was like you know he just spent like two or three minutes doing this little thing but it wasn't great oh it was michelangelo yeah. apparently he's the person who, who said that but we weren't you know burn his drawings but oh yeah <laughs> like Damn. i i think i think part of the reality of all this stuff is everyone works really hard to be seen as the ideal, you know, somebody who is a genius and doing perfect work all the time. But the reality is that 90% of what <laughs> anyone does, no matter how good you are, uh, it's going to be trash, you know, uh, bad ideas and, and stuff. And it's all about like getting past those, those turkeys, you know, um, Let's see if there are any if, if anyone has any questions. Um, by the way, to the person that said I was tired looking, I have I have black tea now to, to give me a <laughs> caffeine boost. I, I am I am kind of tired. So. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been go Have the streams been uh, um, been going? So we've had uh, we had a uh, I guess since monday um i guess from like well, the stream started at 11 and ended at five so it was a six, two six hour streams on monday um, yeah and then a bunch yesterday and then i think there are 12 hours of streams today so it's quite quite, quite a bit it's quite heavy <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, are you going on a, on a screen tablet, tablet or a graphic tablet? Yeah, it's a, a Cintiq 24 Pro. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like it. Nice. Yeah, I just I really started, you know, I kind of like paid it. I, I had this plan of, you know, like taking a break and doing more personal work and getting better. And kind of the only thing I can like, it's kind of just strange. Like once you start, you know, doing like a ridiculous amount of practice, your hand just does stuff. You can't yeah. really explain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you feel like you are a different person than you were when you were a student? Like in terms oh, of yeah. like, you, yeah. do you feel like you still have the same ideas? It's just you're able at executing them more effectively or... Yeah, maybe. Yeah, not not that much. I, I've yeah. always done the like the kind of crazy, silly drawings. I guess they're just a bit more. Yeah, I'm not gonna say mature, but just mm -hmm. like the, the 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 forms are quite a bit different, and but the the kind of ideas are are still kind of the same. It's still like. You know, like the same, uh, the same inspiration I think that I had back then. It's still the stuff I I like now. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a mix between a lot of, you know. I have uh, my 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 wife is a is a medical doctor, so I, I you know I used to like ch check out her books, you know, to learn about weird diseases and. You know, I kind of have this like, what I what I really like is like the the width of <clears throat> the width of the human shape, basically like w what mm. humans can look like right. in 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 you know like in in yeah like, the, the, every, the crazy range way. and yeah, yeah and, and the story that tells and you know yeah for example if you if you look at big fish for example the the movie they got this giant in there and you know like that's a real person and you know like that kind of stuff like what what these for example what uh, certain genetic conditions do with your you know with your with with the body and once you have that genetic bl blueprint you know that's kind of like what you know once it grow once you grow if you have that that's what you're gonna look like that 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 kind of stuff really interests me and it's it's kind of also what i what i use as you know when i'm designing a creature i'm i'm always thinking like okay you know like this this i'm drawing like a big guy you know but he's bigger bigger than a normal person i'm not just going to draw a blown up bodybuilder right because that's not yeah. that's not what what's out there you know yeah well are you thinking about the story as much as you are thinking about the actual drawing you know it's like a <laughs> yeah i think so yeah 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 I, I mean i i always talk to people about this that drawing is just a series of really small decisions you know and it's the quality of the decisions over you know a thousand ten thousand a hundred thousand strokes that you know like you just want the quality of those strokes to be mostly positive and then you have a good drawing, you know? Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, what's your guy's opinion on traditional teaching versus online classes? Uh, I think it depends on what kind of, uh, uh, depends on where you live and it depends on what kind of student you are. Um, you know what what i got out of my my time at at my school even though it wasn't really a good fit uh you know like it was back then it was all i all there was and it was all i could convince my parents of right <laughs> yeah cuz cuz you know they, they they thought it was a bit strange uh, what, what i was trying to become yeah um but yeah, I, I got very good friends out of it. You know, I got I got some nice, you know, like uh, college time 
I guess, you know, like having fun as well. So yeah, yeah there's, there's really, you know, that's, you know, that's the, the, the moment in your life where you have time where you don't, you know, like compared to actually working or having kids, yeah. you know, those are good, pretty good years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it kind of depends. Some people, they just work better in this kind of, you know, they, they maybe they lack the self-discipline to work on their own. Yeah. I, mean, I think you kind of need to yeah, know what kind of person you are. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the, <laughs> the hardest problem to solve, you know. I, yeah. I think the trajectory, at least for me, is that, like, I wanted to get into art because I really liked World of Warcraft a lot, and I liked concept art for that. And then the more I got into art, the more I realized I like academic stuff. And oh, yeah. um, it's been like a weird trajectory to kind of transition into that more so. You know? <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah I, I used to think I, re I w you know, that you know, when I was in school, I used to think like, okay, oh, they're, they're not doing anything. You know, I should be in a, in a, in a, stu you know, like, stu uh, but like an atelier or something. But yeah. looking back now, for myself, it would have been a horrible idea. Yeah. I, I can't do that. I can't sit still and render something for 60 hours. It's impossible for me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would have, you know, I, I would have had a, yeah, real bad time. Because I, I once did a, a workshop with Tetsa Jacobs uh, when he was still alive. He was, like, a very realistic uh, painter. And I realized, you know, like, this is just, this is really hard for me. Like, <laughs> yeah. like doing, you know, coming back to the same piece for days on end. You know, I just, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, well, I, I think it's, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I just did a lot to, like I did a, Instead of just finishing my painting, I, I started like a drawing and I did some sketches and the guy, the guy was kind of frustrated with me uh, yeah. at certain points. Like, yeah, like he wanted, he wanted to talk to me because there was like a, a bunch of uh, older women, you know, they didn't really take it seriously. So yeah, it was a bit angry that, you know. I didn't always want the the the, the advice, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah he, I, he, put, I... he he put me on the track of yeah really uh, going all in on on character design because I showed him his uh, his my sketchbook and he was he was really impressed by it because his his whole teaching is that you know like every person has a certain blueprint and uh, the the proportions that people have they you know they come back in the entire body and yeah. the, the thing i i kind of do with with the stuff from imagination is like okay once you have a certain you know if you place the eyes a bit further out you know out you need a wider nose and you then you need a you know you need a wider mouth because you know the proportions still have to be correct so yeah. you can shift around with proportions like slightly and then you know if you still follow the the the, the rules then you, you know you can get like interesting characters that kind of fit uh still like uh yeah like it would be an actual person yeah 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 when i think that i mean like you were saying before the subtleties and the human figure um, that, I think that's the thing that ends up being the thing that enables you to tell interesting stories with characters, like how a deltoid is shaped, how, you know, the white <laughs> set of the eyes and, and stuff. And um, I guess being aware of that subtlety, that there's no other way of, uh, of learning that stuff. But... <laughs> um, well, and I, I guess it's also important to be aware of how you learn too because um being in an atelier might sound like the perfect situation for a lot of people just focusing on figures and getting to study full-time but that's not necessarily how everyone learns and 
Um, wow. You know, if it doesn't feel right, then that's that's totally okay. Let's see. Um, <laughs> Uh, Apra Smitty asks, do you have any tips for inventing non-idealized anatomy? Big fan of your work. <laughs> um, what do you mean, non-idealized, not perfect? I guess so. Uh, yeah, it's that's kind of like I never study from, you know, like the, well, never is, is too much to say, but you know, uh, I I try to pick my references so they match my work. The idea is that, you know, like, it will reflect. In the end, it, it's all reflecting into your work that, that goes from imagination. So, you know, try to resist those, you know, like, perfect, uh, those perfect Instagram models to draw from. You know, it's not... It's not bad or anything, but you know, you, you need to, yeah, just just study all you know all kinds of stuff. Um, and when when I did model drawing, like when I did the year, the full year of model drawing, every session was with a different model. You know, there was, yeah, there was like a a, a very large lady. It was a skinny girl full of tattoos. It was this uh, African ballet dancer. Then this this Argentinian dancer who was like very, you know, he was, you know, there was two two kinds of muscular. And then there, there was this, uh, yeah, this older lady who looked like she was pregnant but wasn't. And you know, all that, yeah, all that, all those drawing sessions, is just very. Yeah, it's very interesting because yeah, I, I can I can still like kind of you know recall all those those shapes and 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 you know because because I drew them so so much basically I could I could kind of still draw them from uh, yeah from from imagination and uh, those those. Yeah, those basically alternative shapes for human bodies, they're kind of like stuck in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Like I, I draw from, for example, for the, for the portraits, uh, this one, for example, uh, and a couple of my portraits, they're actually drawn from, from mug shots from American prisoners because you know, they there's like there's a whole collection of them online, and uh, you know those people uh, who are you know they're innocent until proven guilty. By the way, it's not because they're arrested that they're guilty. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they just they're not having a good day. Their hair isn't perfect, and by studying that kind of stuff, yeah, you just get more shapes in your head. I think. It's all about, you know, like trying to capture all these these different kind of shapes and uh, remembering them and not just doing, yeah, the typical stuff. Uh, a lot of portfolios I see, like uh, back when I still went to like uh, workshops, you know, the, the lack of diversity in the portfolio is is often quite striking, like it's all like the same you know every character is like the same guy uh yeah you really need to you know make make that conscious decision uh, to uh, to try to draw as many like very things as possible yeah um yeah I, I, people always talk about their visual library and just drawing wide variety of things <laughs> um, can't can't draw what you haven't seen um, let's see
I'm going to go back in time earlier in the chat to more questions. Uh, question, how do you deal with first getting a job without experience? Getting your first job without experience. <laughs> well, uh, let me let me say uh, my uh, what I think what networking actually is. You know, networking is not um, cold calling art directors or uh, sending emails. You know, networking starts uh, right. You know, if you're a student right now and you're you're doing uh, digital art. The networking starts right now and you know you're setting yourself up your network for 10 years later basically like for example i often get people who used to be on the conceptart.org forums and i used to be active on that <clears throat> and i wasn't i wasn't good but people you know people who were also drawing at that time not everyone um becomes a concept artist okay some people give up some people make it and become concept artists other people they realize you know okay i draw well but my talent is actually in art direction for example so you know if you if you're really genuine about your work you know you should be connecting to other artists you should be curious about other artists and asking you know like how do you do you do that how did you do that and you kind of you know for example through workshops or this i guess these days it's discord servers back then it was conceptbar.org uh rest in peace but <laughs> uh yeah so yeah i get i get people from conceptart.org and they'll, they'll open with something like oh yeah i know your work from from back then and I was thinking like, okay, you know, like I was so bad back then, like, but they don't, they, they, their memory is the memory from when they were also bad. So they could see your work and think it was good, you know, cause they weren't professional yet. But the, the thing is that they remember you because you were working hard and, you know, they'll, they'll think of you, they'll check your portfolio or they'll look you up. And if then you, actually managed to improve and kept on working you know you you know th and th those guys they became art directors they look at your work and they go oh yeah we could use this guy so i think the 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 yeah the networking um starts uh yeah very very early uh and i think that's how you get jobs without experience yeah uh, but yeah it's not you know it can be it can be hard you know it's not not always uh the the most easy thing i i, I know i i spent i sent like i made applying to stuff after i graduated uh, a full-time job so i sent i think i sent like two 200 emails at, at, like and i got one reply <laughs> yeah like i i scoured the entire internet for email addresses uh of companies basically uh yeah because i think when i started my my portfolio was not very you know wasn't that good actually uh, and that's probably the lack of the rec the lack of re re responses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But these days, yeah, it's it's I get way more uh, opportunities basically than back then. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Let's see. Um... Uh, what is your ultimate art goal in your art journey? Do you have one? Yeah, I just, I think it's, my, my idea is to finish my style. <laughs> uh, that's the first part. And the second part, I think I'll figure that out later. But yeah, I'm still having a lot of fun improving, I think.
Uh, yeah. I don't really have like a specific project in mind, you know. Uh, right now, everything I'm completely focused on on the Star Wars gig. But I, you know, I'm not gonna say that, you know, working on Star Wars is per se one of my uh, the thing I wanted to do or something. Like I want to get better at drawing. And that's kind of what I'm always worried about or thinking about. I'm not really thinking about, uh, yeah, what projects I want to work on. Actually, I want to do a good job on the job I'm doing, and I want, but I mostly want to create. Uh, like I'm not that interested in seeing a final result. Always, I'm just interested in making good work for the project. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I was talking to Marshall Vandruff about this actually. And I, I asked him a very similar question, like what is he what is his his life's mission? And he said, uh, to do his best work, you know. Yeah. It's it's not to work on a specific project, it's not to, you know, have any accolades or fame from it or money. It's to do work that he's profoundly proud of and you know, feels like well like like it's the best thing he possibly could have done with the um I guess resources he had, you know, um, and uh, yeah, I think being goal oriented in the sense like worrying about jobs and uh, the amount of followers on Instagram is something that you know I think it's <laughs> reasonable to care about that and think about it, but um, it's short lived and it doesn't, you know, um, it's not like once you get those jobs or have those followers, you're going to be completely. 100% fulfilled. No, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Well, I, I, you're, I don't know how many followers you're at now on Instagram, but it's like a, uh, quite a bit, 127 or something. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's strange that 127,000 people can be like, oh, dude, I like your work a lot. It's really cool. Enough to like <laughs> click follow so they see your artwork every day, theoretically. <laughs> and having the validation of 127,000 people is still not enough to feel like, oh, I've made it, you know? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, then you start the job and it's it's like the old insecurities that come back. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember uh, Carl Kapinski came to visit the Broco studio once and he was telling me, like, he cares about the validation of just a few people, you know, John yeah. Gee and... Um, like the illustrators he really cares about. Like if he gets those, uh, that validation from people, that's way more valuable than having 10,000 people or 100,000 people he doesn't know liking his, his images. <laughs> that's what you say when you have 600,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's what you, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> How many is that? Is he no, here, let me see. Like a ridiculous amount. Mm. Yeah, I think Instagram is kind of a full-time job Yeah, because yeah, the, the the algorithm kind of values accounts with a lot of followers yeah. more than uh, accounts with no followers. Yeah. So that's yeah. why in the beginning it's like impossible to to get any followers. But would you say that there's like a snowball effect after like ten thousand followers? It's a lot harder to get. It's a lot easier to find people that will. Um, I think it's even more. Ten thousand is not is like not enough. <laughs> yeah, I feel but, like it, it's it's getting higher and higher. Like yeah, like probably ten thousand used to be a lot. I th I thought, and now it's like fifty thousand is like you know, <laughs> it's like pretty good. And um, <laughs> yeah, I heard somewhere you need to use all of the the features like do the stories and yeah, do the reels, and they're trying to yeah, get yada people. yada compete with TikTok. <laughs> yeah, TikTok is the the thing that that I think what what gave me like my uh, yeah my my start was a portrait of the Joker. Um, so I think like po you know like uh, relevant popular media at the right time is very you know that can get you like quite a boost. Yeah. 
if you if you like you know okay now now uh game of thrones is hot so you draw a portrait of game of thrones you know like you could see that with squid game for example but yeah. at the same time you know do you want to really be you know a slave to that <laughs> yeah um yeah, well, I, I think it's 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 always trying to find the balance between doing the art you want to do and doing the art that you think like, <laughs> uh, perform well. And yeah, um, I ca I, I kind of use the my portraits as kind of like, uh, yeah, as kind of like uh, the, the 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 easy drawing. So you know, you draw a portrait of someone, you know, uh, you know, like. Yeah. a relevant person and then you know you you easily gain followers with that but then you know the real goal is for for, for people to look at the character design <laughs> yeah. so i've never really cared about you know like, i'm just gonna post whatever i what i'm whatever i'm working on yeah um but i think twitter is even more crazy like to, to get a following there was is is even faster. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've heard of people on Twitter getting jobs, um, you know, from art directors reaching out to them and stuff, and like. <coughs> and also, a good one is LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people think it's like a dead thing, but there's a lot of art directors lurking. And CEOs, they they all like lurk on on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, and you can kind of see, uh, you know, the the there's this feature. It's kind of addictive. You can kind of see like uh, twenty people of moving picture company saw your post. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I think that um, Instagram and Twitter are taken less seriously, uh, less professionally than. LinkedIn and LinkedIn is like people don't go there to have fun. They're there to talk about work and stuff. And I think that gives artists a pretty distinct advantage because like um, it's more professional and um, fewer people are seeing it, but it's generally people that are like, like there's less competition essentially is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so normally from of these images, I would also record on my second screen. You know, I would do this window arrange, new window, right? You can yeah. create, kind of create a new window uh, of, your, uh, of your current thing. And whenever you draw on it, it updates, right? Yeah. So what you can do is set it at a zoom level like this on your other screen and then you can record this this thing and then you can kind of create a little procreate style uh time lapse and that's what i use to to make the time lapses and it gives you basically it gives you extra content to post on instagram uh yeah so when i was when i was really you know like uh yeah I'll come up occupying myself with uh instagram trying to get more followers uh yeah it's kind of smart to create content because you can't always be making stuff right sometimes you have to work longer on one piece but you know that's just a way you can create you know more kind of content yeah without actually doing more work yeah yeah. So you you can post the the process, uh, you can post it on whatever TikTok, whatever. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that goes to just how um, every part <laughs> of the process can be something that somebody's interested in. You know, like for a while, people just thought it was just the images. You know, and again, talking to Carl about it, he was talking to me that he his pencil sketches that are so popular on Instagram. He never thought anyone would ever care about them, but then yeah, yeah, that exactly. becomes the, the thing that people care about. A, <laughs> yeah, it's a like, lot, you know. It's like uh, 
I realized that when like one of the little, I did, I posted this little ballpoint pen drawing and then the thing got like, uh, yeah, got like 50,000 likes on it. It's like, oh, I, I don't actually have to do, <laughs> you know, I can post like the quick stuff too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it also makes it less stressy. Yeah. But yeah, enough about that, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um. Let's try and start a new phase or something. <laughs> uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm reading from chat. Um, I stopped slurping my tea, by the way. I'm muting myself when I drink. Somebody got annoyed at me for slurping tea. <laughs> Monkey boy hand cramp. Um, but... Do you have any uh, plans on doing a book or anything? Or. Uh... I was, uh, yeah, this, this stuff is basically uh, kind of the book I'm working on. So, yeah, I'm doing this. It's just like a far away idea, basically, once I get enough content. Uh, yeah, I think it would be cool to have like all my personal work um, together uh, in, a, in a book. But there's no like concrete plans for it yet. Yeah. So the way I, because I often get the question, uh, like I don't use construction lines. The way I kind of work is I work kind of from uh, anatomical features. And putting them in in symmetry, basically, right? So if you have a line here, right? This line here, you know, this line is actually this line, right? So each of these shapes kind of reflects uh, on the other side, even though it's not, uh, you know, the same kind of. It's the same structure, right? Face a face is symmetrical. So if you draw an atomical line here, for example, it needs to be on this side as well, right? So and some some of the features they actually, you know, they disappear behind the face, so they're that you actually don't see them, right? But so I often start here at the uh, at the at, at the corner of the nose. I feel like this width is really hard to get wrong. So, you know, once I kind of draw the, uh, the skull shape, uh, the, the face, uh, face shape, I feel like this, this distance, you know, if you put, if, you know, this is the corner of the eyebrow, right? If you put it here, you know, you're gonna, right? If you put it here, the corner of the, no nose is this wide, right? So it's actually the, the top, the width of the nose at the top. So it's actually not that hard to get right. And also, uh, I think key to my rendering is uh, there's no, whenever I render something, I never make flat values. I, I'm always making round edges, basically. So I won't draw lines. You know, I won't do this. You know, I'll put in the edge straight away, right? So I'll draw. You know, when you, whenever you see, wherever you see lines, right? You, 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 you're basically drawing the line because you see an edge there, right? But an edge is kind of flowing to one one side. So instead of drawing the line and then rendering after, uh, every kind of stroke I make is already with with like a sort of correct edge. 
So if I if I if I'm drawing, you know, the, the, this line of the nose, I'll I'll mark the direction the rendering is gonna go in. <clears throat> Um, by the way, uh, Ace asks, can, uh, are you going to come back to Twitch soon? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a problem a bit now. Now I have a full-time job. <laughs> and, a, and a child, too. And a child. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be tricky. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm kind of bummed about it. I kind of... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I kind of, I, I was kind of really on on a on a on a groove uh, with it, and now I'm doing the the Star Wars stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I think I'll just see what happens uh, in a couple of months. Uh, you yeah. know, maybe they'll fire me and I'll go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, by the way, I will um, re-mention this for any new people listening to the stream. We're doing this for the uh, Proko Ukraine fundraiser. Right now, we're raising money for the humanitarian effort in Ukraine to help uh, fund hospitals, uh, help refugees, feed kids, that sort of thing. 100% um, of the donations are going to be going to those charities. And if you'd like to go and donate, go to proko.com slash Ukraine. Um, and again, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, to do this. It's, uh, it's very kind of you. We're almost at, let's see what we're at. Um, I think we're almost at $37,000. Great. <laughs> Raise total. Yeah. Um, so again, like you have this curve here, right? And it, they're just like symmetrically on the other side, there's the same curve, right? So if you're drawing this here, there's one on the other side too. And the good thing about digital is you can just cut stuff out and move it. <laughs> Trying to think of a profound art question to ask you. It's going to change people's <laughs> lives. Um. I'm just going to say it's just practice. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's always just practice. <laughs> um, how do you get better at practicing? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> just, just practice, dude. I think actually the real talent is persistence. Yeah. But maybe you can also, I think you can also learn. I think you just, you know, when, when people have problems working for long times, they can, you know, they can also you can learn that by actually trying to increase the, the time you work over over time. You can't, you, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, like how, how, you know, how many hours do you draw? But you, you can't really expect if you're having trouble drawing one hour a day to go to eight hours a day or six hours a day or... You just gotta build build up the st stamina, I think. Yeah, well, and I, I think a big part of this stuff is finding the why of doing art. You know, it's like it's hard to put in those hours required to get really, really good if you don't understand why you're doing it in the first place. And yeah, that's true. I think that the why of <laughs> for money or fame or whatever is not strong enough to keep you doing it forever. No, you have to like no, no. find something else deeper than that to. <laughs> Don't want to do it that, that much. Yeah. Um, like I, I, I guess always watching uh, Kim Jong Gi draw is always surreal because it's like a, you know, it seems like he's he's found a a why for it that a, you know, like he would be drawing if he was the last person on the planet. It feels <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't think I'll. Uh, I I kind of get the same. The same uh, feeling like I'm never gonna stop doing this. 
Like, yeah. it just, and once you get better at it, it also becomes way more fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's kind of the uh, irony of it is that you have to kind of earn the right to have fun at drawing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I was talking to another friend about this, that the path of like pursuing fame or likes on Instagram is actually not all bad. It's not like it's unethical or immoral to do that. Like having val external validation for your artwork is what everyone wants. And to strive for that is totally okay. Yeah, just... I, th I, uh, I think it's a very uh, fortunate thing to have. You know, okay, it's, it's a lot of people going to, pretend they don't care about it, but it, it allows you to actually make a living out of your work uh, yeah. without being, uh, yeah, without anyone actually telling you what to do and yeah. what to draw. So is, isn't that like the, the artist's dream? Yeah, absolutely. You know, to just, you know, with, with the Romans, you used to have the, the patron, patronage, like a, a wealthy family would pay the artist to just make work, right? And, and now that exists uh, under the form of, you know, the internet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's, um, I think that's something really important to pay attention to and be aware of. It's like, um, <laughs> as long as, like, no matter how niche you think your interests are, some somebody's definitely going to be interested in what you have to say out of yeah. like the 8 billion people on the planet or whatever <laughs> it is now, you know, yeah, exactly. to say at least a million of them wouldn't care. Like <laughs> probably, probably wrong. And, uh, you can make a, <laughs> you can make a account about your pet uh, lizard. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There are, there are people, there are probably accounts with pet lizards that are more famous than anyone <laughs> we know, you know? So, make good money. Yeah. yeah, there's this uh, there's this funny movie clip about this girl commenting on it. Like, it's actually quite funny. Like, she's like, "I'm tired of my fucking pet lizard account, <laughs> yeah. and I can't stop because it's my only source of income." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I I think I think there's like a a small lesson to learn there where it's like do the shit you want to do because if you <laughs> get famous off things you don't like doing you're gonna have to do that for the rest of your life you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's kind of what i what i realized when i was working for uh borderlands and mm -hmm. i was just i was getting so depressed i don't know like not because like the people there were great and you know i got great friends working there but it's just it wasn't what i wanted to do so yeah and I, I was working there for four years and you know i was just feeling worse and worse about the work i was making you know i just had no yeah and i yeah it was kind of double like i started doing personal work for it again and then uh yeah the personal work kind of <clears throat> took over yeah uh, yeah no. Yeah, you know, and again, I think it's important to just be aware of like, uh, you know, personal, like your style. Everyone's always talking about how do I get a style? How do I draw the art that I really want to do? Um, it's just doing, <laughs> doing work. You just figure it out eventually. Like the fact that, um, you know, I was talking to a friend about this who draws anime ladies for a living, like cute yeah. anime boys and ladies. And we were talking about how silly it is that she gets to make a living drawing anime boys, you know, um, and just the ridiculousness of it, you know, it's like, um, yeah, yeah, and being the, okay with it. Yeah. yeah, I was listening to the Steve Zapata. Yeah. You know, when you're commenting on the not, and uh, how do you say it? Not suitable for work kind of work. Yeah, yeah, that's very porn. Yeah. yeah, and I was thinking like, you really have to like doing that or it's just not like, I couldn't, I really couldn't do that. Like I couldn't, yeah. like I, I was checking out like Twitch and there's like, sometimes there's these, these kind of artists, they kind of stream 
you know, the 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 semi loot part of their work on it. Yeah. And then, you know, they're they're like working so long yeah. on on this kind of image. Like it's yeah. hours and hours you have to stare at it. And I was just like, okay, you know, maybe these guys are making shitload of money on uh, Twitch or whatever, Patreon. Yeah. But I, I just, I can't, I just, it's impossible to do, you know, to do this kind of work and not, you yeah. know, be completely into it. Well, I, I think that's something really important to pay attention to is like, <laughs> you know, you might be able to make more money doing a different kind of art, you know, let's just say like NSFW art, for example, uh -huh. uh, like drawing porn. Um, and knowing that you can make more money potentially doing that, it, it would make your life more comfortable, you know, whatever. You still can't do it <coughs> for whatever reason. There's something inside of you that stops you from doing it, you know? And I think that's like a really important thing to pay attention to. It's like, like the logical side of it uh, is overshadowed just by the emotional feeling, you know, <laughs> this is not what I meant to do. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and, and I, I go I go hard on the, really hard on that feeling like yeah <laughs> you can go can't. really hard on that feeling or <laughs> no it's it's like impossible to to ignore like uh yeah. if if I'm not if I'm not into it like the drawing I'm making I'm like yeah uh <laughs> yeah well I, I think so much of art I'm, is intuitive I'm terrible at that yeah um yeah, I, I have a podcast where I always talk about um, the meaning of art and a common, it, it's becoming a joke between the people that listen to me and my podcast, but I'm always talking about um, furry porn, you know, <laughs> and uh, or, <laughs> how like, you know, I, I, I respect people who actually do it because it's so outside mainstream media and there's something brave about it, I think, actually. <laughs> that they're so into what they are into that they're willing to um go through the societal judgment of drawing furry porn to do the things they want to do you know it's like, oh that's actually kind of brave you know it's kind of neat um yeah and... it's like a uh, saki mishan yeah she used to work for uh what was it uh the company that did the, the last of us oh uh naughty dog yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. She and, she gave up the job to become like I, I once talked to an art director of Naughty Dog. He was telling this story. I mean, I hope it's true. Like I, I think I can t talk about it, but yeah. She's saying she was working for it and then suddenly like with no reason left <laughs> left the company. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and then, it, then it turns out she was like top Patreon earner of the year or something. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and it's like good it, for her. <laughs> and I, I think I think there is that balance, that perfect balance of like doing the things you want to do and earning really, really good money. And I think that it definitely does exist. Um, and uh, it a question that I ask everybody is: Would you be doing exactly the same thing you're doing right now if you had a billion dollars? Um, and if Sakimi Chan suddenly had a billion dollars, I think she would still be drawing the kind of artwork she draws. Um, and I think once you realize that about yourself, like I would be, you know, drawing for free porn or whatever, not, not me, just people doing it, <laughs> even if I had a billion dollars and it's probably something really important, <laughs> really important to pay attention to. And yeah. I, I suspect that even if you had a billion dollars, you would still be drawing these wacky characters and, um, you know, studying anatomy, buying portraits, you know, doing portraits and all that kind of stuff. Um, I wonder, like, yeah, I was wondering if I kind of like found my actual, like with the streaming and everything, I really, you know, the thing I like about it is that, yeah, you're, you're drawing exactly what you're drawing and then you're also kind of breaking uh, you're kind of doing stuff that you know that's kind of missing in the you know you're you're having like conversations, and yeah. it's it's that that's also a bit like sometimes 
with with the actual studio jobs that you spend so much time in your head you know i i sometimes wonder if it's like healthy for your you know especially if you're a freelancer you know uh i i used to work alone in my house and i, I just went crazy there <laughs> like i i'd start working i didn't have kids so i'd start i'd woke up after my girlfriend already left for work uh because you know i'm an artist i'm a night person of course uh and then yeah i didn't talk to anyone i just worked 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 then she came home and it was like my voice would sound like i'm i'm talking right now you know except right now i have a, a an actual sore throat you know yeah it, it just looked like i was i would forget how to talk <laughs> So that's why I yeah I worked a lot in uh, coffee coffee shops actually like a lot of the Borderlands work was actually just done in inside a coffee shop yeah <laughs> I was I just had like my regular spot there and uh... yeah um and, yeah and well, I, yeah good. now. Now I work in a shared studio. Yeah. Maybe I can uh, have a quite nice. Oh, nice. Hey. Quite a nice view. That's very cool. Oh, man. That's exciting. Oh, I think I remember last time I spoke to you. Is anyone there right now? Or? No, I don't want that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're the last one there. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, so I, I lived in a van for six months last year. I, I lived in a van for, I, I live in a van right now, but. I drove around the United States for six months last year, drove to New York and back completely by yeah. myself. And I found that like I was doing all of the cool things I'd ever wanted to do, like go to the national parks. I was in Yosemite, Joshua Tree, uh, up in Montana, up in New York City, Chicago, like everywhere in the US. Um, and I found that like, even though I was in the best places, I was sometimes completely uninspired, you know? Yeah. Like being around people was actually, I found, incredibly important for me to be inspired to go and, and do things you know um it doesn't matter if you're in one of the most beautiful places on the planet if you're uh i guess not surrounded by people that support you you know or like i, I guess what i'm saying it, it's it's uh, totally okay to you know ask for help or to be somebody who's um you know like in, you know in a studio um but. yeah and then and then again like studio studio work if you're working for like a big client the yeah the difference is that that's the actual challenging stuff so yeah after a while if you if you don't do that thing you you kind of start to wonder you know can i can i still do that if you're yeah. not working on that so that's yeah. kind of the the yeah the difference like Basically, if you're streaming, you're usually kind of working in a comfort zone place. Yeah. And yeah, working for a big project, you know, pulls you right out of it. So yeah, it's yeah. more stressful, but maybe it's also more rewarding. So yeah. yeah, it's a bit of, yeah, I guess you can't have everything, but yeah, I think it's good to like switch, to switch around a bit. Oh, for sure. Well, I, I remember uh, I had a, do, do you know Morgan Weisling? the painter no uh he, he's a western painter that uh you know he sells paintings for 50 or sixty thousand dollars, and this really prolific fine artist and i remember i was i had him on my podcast and we were talking about how uh he worked in the 80s and 90s as a as an illustrator um uh -huh. you know working on movie posters and stuff and he was telling me that that time spent as an illustrator was actually a lot it was actually very enjoyable as an artist versus being alone in the studio <laughs> uh, because people would tell him what, like when his painting was finished, he could kind of turn off at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. as a fine artist to doing all of his own work, really, you know, doing everything from scratch, essentially, <laughs> like um, he worked so hard and he's so um, perfectionist about his work that sometimes he feels like being in a studio <laughs> enables him to kind of 
display some of the responsibility onto onto other people. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. No, that's true. Like if you're if you're yeah if you're doing the the Instagram thing, like if I'm doing that, yeah, you you also have stress because you kind of you know you kind of just not knowing what you're doing all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you're thinking, oh, I need to make a new Gumroad product, and then you start something, and then you realize it's it's stupid. So yeah, it's not yeah. always. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not always easy. Yeah. Even if you, yeah, have the, the ability to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. We have about uh, four minutes left in the stream, I think. Um, actually, okay. I, I don't know. Well, we might have fifteen minutes or four minutes. Um, it's okay. Ask. Yeah. Yeah. Um, question, question. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'll, I'll just say people are saying hello. Nathan Delpret says hi. Hello. Mommy Long Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, oh, somebody, uh, Alexandre LC says, as a porn artist, I can say that some of us just like doing it for making a living, of course, but also because it's our thing, like black and white or only portrait is for others. Um, yeah, so it seems like there are <laughs> porn artists that do enjoy doing doing that kind of stuff. Sure. Uh, let's see. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, what's Jen's favorite sport? Is it Jens or Jens? Jens. Jens, sorry. Uh, <coughs> favorite sport? Um, I'd say cycling. Oh, man. You cycle? Yeah. I've, I've been getting into it over the past couple of years. <laughs> I've been loving it. Getting into touring. I've been getting kind of out of it. That's, I'm sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's fun. It's fun because it's, you know, you need, it's like, uh, yeah. Okay, running, running is cool, run, you know, but it's, it's like, it's actually kind of terrible because it's all like the things that cycling is not, you know, you don't, except that, you know, it's, it's, it's a really hard sport, both of them, but cycling also have, has like the, the speed. If you go, you know, if, you, if I go to the, to the south of Belgium, it's more yeah. hilly. Like he, yeah. over here, it's flat. Everything's flat. It's not yeah. that exciting. But once you go in the more like, uh, yeah, hilly regions, you can, you know, yeah. and you go downhill. So it's kind of, it's kind of like everything. It's suffering. It's, yeah. it's, it's scary. Solo. It's exhilarating. Yeah. That's why I like it. Solo adventures. <laughs> um, at some yeah, point, if, I... if you go downhill, yeah. At you know sixty miles per uh, let's say forty miles per hour, and you know you're on this thin little, it's almost like wires those those modern bikes you know it's like you're going so fast and you know you kind of know you're gonna die if you make a mistake. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna hurt really bad. <laughs> have you have you have you done face plants yet with the bike? <laughs> um. Uh, I haven't, I haven't wiped out yet. Uh, um, but I broke, I broke my elbows three times going over the the handlebars. Uh, but like, <laughs> like just abrupt stops or something, or no, just like a hole in the road. And oh shit, man! You just yeah. go, and then you <laughs> you do this with your hands, and yeah. then you break. Oh shit! The fo the force yeah. breaks the the elbow. Yeah, yeah, it's. Quite painful, but it's I haven't had no collarbones or anything, or no broken. No, no, just just uh, my elbows. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I've been getting into cycling, uh, like the touring kind of thing. I've done a couple like four hundred mile rides over a few like a week or so, so yeah. like fifty or sixty miles a day, and um, that's good. It's been like one of the funnest things I've ever done, like just seeing the world and it's less horrible than running and a lot faster than walking. <laughs> so yeah. 
like it's just like a fun a fun thing to do um i plan on doing a a, a um trip across europe at some point um it, it, if i stop in belgium i'll hit you up and, yeah you need to because yeah. it's a cycling it's a cycling country here you yeah, got yeah. some very famous uh climbs here or man it's, you gotta do the wall of uh Gerardsberg. yeah there's like a you know the classic uh it's like a, a a gravel no it's like a cobblestone road that goes yeah. up really steep yeah yeah dude I'll, I'll definitely eat you up i might do that this year <laughs> or next year at some point yeah. yeah anyways I, I think uh, i think we should probably uh, wrap up yeah. the, the stream uh, uh do you have any other closing thoughts or anything about how your drawings or any ideas yeah uh i don't know i hope you guys all uh uh do a bit of uh charity <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah thanks that, again yeah um, i think that's why we're here yeah, yeah you know yeah thanks again for doing this man uh again we're raising funds for the humanitarian efforts in ukraine yeah, you know exactly getting money for hospitals and kids and uh refugees and stuff um if you want to donate go ahead and go to proco.com ukraine and if you'd like to follow jens uh he's on instagram he's a he's one of my favorite artists we're really glad to thanks. you know get yeah the chance for, to talk with him today. for me it was kind of heartbreaking to see for example like artists like uh sasha franceva who is a Korean Ukrainian artist, you know, I follow her for so many years and then suddenly she you hear, you know, she's uh driving refugees from Kiev to the the, the west of Ukraine, stuff like that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like I, I never realized I, I never kinda knew, you know, I, I it's not my focus to know of what country somebody is from, you know, if they're artists. Not everyone puts that in their profile, but suddenly, you know, there's six, seven people, you know, whose lives are completely crazy, you know, became, you know, unimaginable, basically, you know, and suddenly you realize that, you know, like, okay, the, these people were, you know, they were just doing the same thing as me. They were, you know, drawing silly drawings every day and suddenly, you know, like, that probably feels super redundant for them. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Or or, you know, even people from Russia, you know, they're escape that escape the country because they don't agree with what go with, with you know with what's going on there. For example, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, uh, Stan Prokopenko, he's Ukrainian, and yeah. you know, one of his the city he was born in is is I think it, I believe it's being bombed. <laughs> Yeah, the stuff that's happening. Way. Yeah, it's yeah, really, really strange. But yeah, yeah. Anyways, thanks again, everyone, for joining. All right, you know, and thanks again. Thanks Jens. for watching, guys. Yeah, I don't know how many people were here, but I didn't look at the chat. I think I think we we had quite quite a few, like six, seven hundred or so. Awesome. Um, and then I we'll, we'll find we'll figure out how many concurrent viewers, were, <laughs> like total, in in a moment after the stream. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you can go ahead and end it, John, if you would like.